excited. I'm so excited. I feel like it's been forever. Um, I feel like God put a word on my heart that I just cannot wait to share with you. I feel like I've just been kind of a horse at the starting gate of a race, just kind of waiting, waiting on the right timing, waiting on the revolution, revelation, the word of God to be able to come and share with you. And now is the time. So we're in this series. We are starting this series called Armor Up, and we're going to dive into the book of Ephesians. We're going to pull out some things, and we really, what I really, 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 really want to get to is the armor of God, the armor of God. So we're going to do posts. I'm going to post them on YouTube every Tuesday and every Friday morning, and you can follow this series. There's going to be eight parts to this series, and I'm just hoping that you will leave this series feeling empowered, feeling like you can apply these chapters and these verses to your life and you can feel fortified. I don't know about you, transparency moment, but I have felt overwhelmed. I have felt very overwhelmed by life, just the things that have gone on in life. Um, grief, we've gone through grief in our family. My son lost his dad <clears throat> last year. And so we've been walking through that and how to walk a 13, 14 year old through grief. How do we do this? And so um, I've had that. We've had family stuff. We've had transitions going on. And so I, I felt heavy, so heavy. And I had to come to a place where I, I was searching the word of God. You can have so much head knowledge of the word of God, but still not apply it. And I didn't want that to be me. And so I've been praying, I've been studying. If you're a close friend of mine, you know I've reached out to you. God, I I was desperate to be reminded of my strength. And, and in this season, I kept remembering that we have the armor of God. We have access to the armor of God. So what does this mean to walk this out? How do we get to a place where we can put on our armor every single day and we can feel strong? Because I do think that that is a place that we can get to. I do think that that is a place that you can access every single day and you can show up every day strong and fortified. But I do think that it's a process. My son plays football. And there's a season, at the beginning of the season, they don't practice with any equipment on. And then gradually they add one piece of equipment at a time, one piece of equipment, one piece of equipment, until they get ready and closer to... Um, playing time and then they're they're conditioned they're strong they can now um, practice full practices in all of their gear and I believe that the same is true with the armor of God I think there's some things that we need to understand and have a deeper knowledge and understanding of so that we can live our lives in such a way that we are conditioned and we are strong enough and we are capable enough of putting on this full armor of God and facing every challenge that comes our way. And so that's my prayer for you today, that as we jump into this word, that you will feel empowered, that you will feel challenged. You know, let us not be the group of people that just, amen, amen, every Sunday, but have no transformation of our life. Let me tell you the truth. I think Stephen Furtick said it best in his series recently about ugly truth, ugly trust, but it is not an easy life to live trusting God. It's not easy, but it is fruitful and it is beneficial. And sometimes it costs us things. Sometimes it costs us the ability to not be able to justify our actions or our responses. Sometimes it means we have to love people that don't treat us lovingly. Sometimes it means we have to zip it and keep our mouth shut and just smile and walk away because we know and we trust that God is gonna work out things for us that we don't have to work out for ourselves. So here's the freedom in this. I don't gotta do any work except focus on who I am in Christ. What does the word of God tell me to do? My job is to fortify my armor, to make sure that I'm living in a way that when I put my armor on, that I am empowered and emboldened, that the grace of God does that for me. And then when I face the uncomfortableness of having to zip it or give love or walk away and not be able to justify myself, I know that God is going to do for me what I cannot do for myself. And God fights my battles and I don't have to fight them because I've already put my armor on. I'm already living in such a way that reflects 
the love of Jesus that reflects the character of Christ in my actions. And so, okay, I've talked too much. Let's dive into this. I'm going to just kind of give you some bits and pieces from each chapter until we get to the meat and the bones. It's all meat and bones. I would say until we get to putting on the actual armor of God. So we're going to start here in Ephesians. And right, the heading of Ephesians 1 is the blessing of redemption or something of the sort, depending on your translation of your Bible. But Ephesians 1. Here's the thing that we have to understand if we're going to put on the armor of God. That is, we have been blessed with redemption. The price has been paid, y'all. I know we know this in our head, but do we know this in our hearts? We have been blessed with the redemption of Christ. That means that our old ways, we can let go of, we can change, we can be a new person because Jesus paid the ultimate price. Here's the thing. This is, this book is written by Paul. He is writing to the church and he's breaking some things down because old custom, Old Testament custom before Jesus came and, and died and right uh, was raised to life again, there was Jews and there was Gentiles. But when Jesus died on the cross, he kind of, he tore that veil. He made it so that, that everybody could be saved. And so now we have the Gentiles who were not used to Jewish customs. And some of those customs we've let go of. And some of them are, are kind of still around. But Paul breaks these things down so that the Gentile church, so that the laymen, so that the new believers, so that people like me, because I need things really broken down, will understand that they have access to all these things and they even have access to the full armor of God. And so he's really breaking things down very simplistically and he's saying, hey, if you have been saved, he says that we have a part to play in this process. We have to believe in this story, we have to believe in Jesus. We have to have faith in Jesus. And that's our part in this process is to believe, to trust, to have faith, right? And then God does the rest of it. God did not leave us alone. He didn't take Jesus from us to leave us alone, but he left us with the Holy Spirit. And when we live our life in such a way, and I'm talking about chapter 1, verse 13, in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, that's our action, is to believe, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit comes as a seal upon our life, and he is our countenance. He helps us. He helps us to live out life when we feel a little like, oh, I don't feel good. Maybe that's the Holy Spirit giving us some conviction, trying to talk to us, trying to teach us some things. And when we live our life in that way, it's like a seal on our life saying, oop. They're living their life differently. I see that seal of the Holy Spirit on them, and they're living their life differently. They must be a Christian. They must be filled with faith. They must live their life differently. But we have to make our choice to do that. We have to make lots of choices. Sometimes it's about loving people. It says here that this church in Ephesus loved people so well. They were recognized not only for loving those who loved them, but for loving difficult people. They loved everybody. And that's something we have to recognize. That's part of our countenance, part of our demeanor, part of how we carry ourselves. I'm going to skip to chapter two. There's so much. You should totally go back and read these chapters. But I'm going to skip to chapter two because this is really what I want to focus on today. It says that when we receive redemption, when we've been redeemed, when we receive and recognize that that is ours to take, that we are coming alive again. I'm going to paraphrase and skip through these verses, but I am at chapter 2, verse 1. It says, You were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world. That was former. And verse 3, among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. So before we came to Christ, we were, we were wrong. We were living dead. We, were, we had a former life, and it was dead. There was nothing to it. I don't know about you, but if you felt oppressed, or you felt down, or you felt, or you felt unrecognized, you know, you've come to the place of, of, redemption that means you had to realize that what was dead what was going on in your life was killing you what was going on in your heart and your mind the choices that you were making was dead there was nothing to it there was nothing alive and you wanted to be made alive again and so you came and you asked Jesus 
Jesus, please be the Lord of my life. And when you did, I bet you felt this breath of life overtake you because at that moment you were made alive. Verse four says, but God being rich in his mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. It is by grace that you have been saved. Oh man, I want to stop right here. This is really what I want to get to. There was a former life. You used to be dead, but now you are alive in Christ. I want to read this quote. It's not Bible. It's just a quote. It says, a dead man feels comfortable in his coffin. A dead man feels comfortable in his coffin. Man, when we were living our life full of dead things, we just felt comfortable. This is where we were supposed to be. This is what we do. There's nothing better than this. But if he were made alive again, he would be uncomfortable and suffocated in that coffin. I want to point out to you today that maybe you're feeling oppressed. Maybe you're feeling heavy. Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed. But maybe, just maybe, it's because you have been made alive in Christ. You are breathing in his mercies every new. And so the way that you were living before is not sufficient for how you are living now. If you're still trying to live in the coffin of the same choices that you are making, if you're still trying to live in the coffin of a of an unequally yoked relationship. I say relationship, not marriage, because those are different. You might still feel suffocated if you're dating someone, living with someone that you're not married to and that they don't know Jesus. If you feel like you are uh, overwhelmed, your marriage is overwhelmed, your friendships, your relationship, your work, maybe it's because you have been made alive in Christ and you cannot live or try to make the same choices that you used to because you are now alive. You can take that breath in. I want to I want to point this out to you because I think before we can put on the full armor of God and be able to fight, right? Our weapons are not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Before we can under, understand that, we have to understand that we have been reconciled with Christ. And when we are reconciled, when we are redeemed with Christ, when we accept that redemption, then we have to live differently. And that's a choice that we make when we believe in God is to live differently. And what does that mean, Jessica? I don't know what that means. That's scary. I don't want to be a different person. I'm the same person. We're going to break this down in the next coming sessions. But we got to focus on that. Recognize, man, I am not the same person. And if you try to do the same thing all the time, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be overwhelmed. Lord, I'm preaching to the choir today, friends. I'm preaching to myself. If we try to do the same thing the same way and get a different result, that is the definition of insanity. So if you're feeling insane and crazy and overwhelmed, it's probably because you need to let go, breathe in his new mercies for you and begin to live and act in a different way. It says here in verse five, even when we were dead in our transgressions, even when we were dead, listen to this, you have to be dead to your transgressions. You have to be dead you have to let every attempt to justify yourself, justify your reactions, justify your responses. You have to let all of that die with your old self. But I just, I just love him and I just feel like it doesn't matter if he doesn't know Jesus, he's going to know Jesus. Nope, let it die. Or I just feel like I was nice to them for a little bit, but they were mean to me and I just want to justify. If you are trying to justify yourself, you're missing the point. When we became redeemed, when we breathed in, when we asked Jesus to come in and change our life, he made us alive. And therefore, we do not have to justify ourselves anymore. Why? Because we're going to act different. We're going to do some different things. We're going to have some different responses. We're going to let him fight some battles for us. But when we do that, we no longer have to justify because it is by grace you have been saved. And here's what grace is. I love this. I heard this, this was not me, I heard it from someone else. But grace, grace uh, often is like, oh, the grace of God will cover that. Oh, just to let them, the grace of God will just, oh, just smooth it over with the grace of God. No, the grace of God is not a covering to let people do whatever they want. The grace of God is an empowerment. 
And I'm going to tell you right now, as a living example, when I recognize that the grace of God empowers me to not feel like I have to be ashamed of my choices and my decisions, when the enemy comes to attack me now and say, Jessica, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this, I can now stand, and this is what Paul's talking about, I can now stand. Stand in my weaknesses because I understand that the price has been paid. I am not a thief trying to get away with something. No, Jesus has paid the price. He's paid the price for my living in sin. He's pr paid the price for the lustful decisions that I made. He paid the price for the abortions that I had. He paid the price for the drunken decisions that I made. He paid the price for me so that I can stand in my weaknesses and say, I am not that person anymore. I am not, I am dead to those things. I am dead to those justifications because I made a choice and I called out to God and God became the Lord of my life. He has sealed me with the Holy Spirit. I am now not the same. I am making different decisions. I am making a new life. And because of that, the enemy cannot attack you. And if we begin to understand the power in dying to those old things, letting those old things die, accessing the the redemption that the Lord wants to give us, applying that to our life and beginning to live a different way, we will access the power and the authority that comes with the grace of God over our life. It's not, shh, don't say that. Don't tell people that. I can't let people know that. What if they know those things? What if they know those things? What if you stand and say, I lived this life before, but today I recognize that those were the dead decisions I was making. And I now understand and access the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I have let the Holy Spirit set a seal on my heart so that I can represent Jesus to this world. I can stand on my past and say, I used to be, but I am not. Today I am delivered. Today I am redeemed. And my friends, when you do that, you will access, you will begin to access the authority. We are conditioning ourselves to be able to put on the full armor of God and stand against the attacks of the enemy. So today, I want to leave you with some homework. Today, I want to remind you, I want to ask you to ask God to take some time in the next couple of days to pray and ask God, God, what are some things that I need to die to? What are some things that I'm trying to justify? I'm trying to make excuses about what are these things in my life that I need to let die? I need to ask for forgiveness. I need to leave on the cross so that you can redeem them and you can empower me. God, I pray right now that you would reveal secrets to these people. My friends that are sitting here listening to me and they've got secrets in their life that they don't want nobody to know because they think they're going to be judged. I pray that you would break that. I pray that you would break that in the name of Jesus right now, that they would throw out those lies, God. The lying and secrets are where the enemy wants to, wants to grow and he wants to mold and he wants to slither into those secret crevices into our lives. But when we have the grace of God, when we access that empowerment of the grace of God, we can die to our old life and we can begin to be made alive in Christ without justification, with full acceptance and change to who we are. God, I just pray for my friends that you would reveal those things to them, God. And then I pray that they would write them down, and that they would give them to you, Lord, that they would take authority over them by writing them down, by admitting to them. And then I pray that they would give those things to you, crossing them out. God, we give you pride. We give you love. We give you lust. We give you the justification of wrong relationships. We give you our job. We give you our kids and the way that we've maybe been pushing them instead of trusting you. God, we give that to you, God. I pray that we would walk this out today so that we can come back together in a couple of days and we can learn another part of conditioning so we can be women who access the full power and the authority of the armor of God in our lives. But I pray that we would start right here and just admit that we need you. We need you in our life, Lord. Thank you for being the Lord of our lives, Lord. If there's anybody under the sound of my voice that does not have and has not yet prayed the sinner's prayer, God, I just pray right now that they would stop and just call out to you. God, we recognize our need of you. We recognize that without you, we are nothing, but with you, we have access to everything that we need, God. And we pray that you would come into our hearts, that you would come into our minds, and that you would be the Lord of our lives. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Friends, we're going to be back on Friday with another video, and I just cannot wait to dive into this. Remember, a dead man feels comfortable in his coffin, but if he were made alive, he would be uncomfortable. So let us get rid of those things that are making us uncomfortable. Access the redemption that Jesus has for us so we can be conditioned and we can put on the full armor of God. Love you. Talk to you later, friends. 